Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are starting part two of the Beam Hammer build series. So now what we're working on today is we're working on the actual beam portion. In the previous video we w went over in the frame part of this hammer. What I'm working on here right now is the hinge plate or the part that's going to make the hammer arm or handle if you will of the beam hammer take and pivot and if you notice what I did in the first part of this video in the original intro you may have to stop rewind and watch it again I took an angle grinder and I cut a groove on a mark that I had previously made so this way I could bend these at exact angles then I welded up that valley that was created after they were put in the correct position. This is a clean way of making a nice accurate uh, break point there. Now we're just welding this up to the actual hinge pin itself and getting this all welded in and you really just want to take and put the weld on the top and bottom and you want to make sure you stay away from the ends as much as possible because you don't want them to rub against your bearings at a later date. So after we got that part uh, prepped, now we're going to cut off our leaf spring. Now you can find this leaf spring at any tractor supply. Uh, the actual, all the parts and stuff are in the plans for the beam hammer. And all the, you know, all the parts of this hammer is in the plans of the beam hammer. I do not have a material list for the beam hammer, but I do have all the parts or assemblies and exploded views, things like that. Um, so right here we're looking at this notch and you can see the bolt that's still holding the stack together. That's going to be crucial for a couple of reasons when you go to install this. The reason why is because we don't want to have to retemper our spring. So therefore we had to cut it off. Well, there's only one hole in the spring to begin with. So we need to create a notch to where it would slot in on a second bolt as so this way it doesn't spin. Now we're going to mark this out on both sides in the center, in the center of the piece. So you should have something that's looking like this and then we'll get it drilled and come back. So after we've gotten it drilled, we're going to take and mark out our locations on our wood beam and we're going to drill holes all the way through. Now these are three eighths inch bolts and I believe they're just a little over six inches long I want to say they're like seven or eight inch bolts in length but then that's how that should look you can see how that that spring slotted into the other bolt and there's some more details of how that hinge joint is supposed to look so after we've got that done we're going to flip the beam around and we're going to work on the actual hammer portion, or the head of this hammer. Now this is done with our side pieces, our side plates. And we're really just trying to line everything up, kind of see how it's supposed to look. I've already pre-drilled the holes. Once again, indicated on the plans. I already pre-drilled the holes in the actual side plates. And... Now I'm just marking those out and drilling them to the beam. So we'll get that drilled out. We'll put all of our bolts in there to match. And we'll put on our other side plate as well. Now this might take a little bit of fidgeting depending on how well you, how squarely you drilled your holes. I didn't drill mine that square. So as you can see, I'm fighting with it here a little bit to get it together. But eventually I, I win. So the purpose of these two clap pieces and bolting through like I'm doing here is this helps for it to not just be something that's screwed to the underside of this beam or bolted to the underside of this beam that could eventually wear out and fall off. This right here, this kind of is going to encapsulate the whole end of the beam and it's going to do two parts for us. 
Not only is it going to encapsulate the beam, but it's also going to compress the wood fibers at the end of the beam to prevent potential splitting out at the end. And you'll see at a later time, I will weld a top onto this as well after I get the dies welded up and in. Now the dies are just a three-piece construction that I stack up and then I weld together. But I'm going to do that after I get my top piece on. So I got my piece clamped up. And now you're seeing me tacking this up. And I went ahead and just welded all the way through. You're really going to want to take this off, back off again, in order to take and actually weld this solid. Because I was getting some porosity of my weld because the wood was burning underneath and off gassing up into the molten weld pool. So that's definitely not good. You, you're going to want to take and you can see all the trouble I'm having with it here. You're going to want to take this back off to weld this up. So don't do like I did, so to speak. Yeah, you can see it off gassing there and burning. I had a terrible time getting this welded, but the camera was rolling, so I went to town. So after we get this back encasement uh, welded on, we're going to go ahead and flip it over. And we're going to go ahead and get our dies welded up. Now at this time I went ahead and welded up my anvil dies as well for the actual anvil block that's going to go on the power hammer. But I'm only showing you one of the processes here where I weld up the actual top die. Once again, this is just multiple pieces and just all stacked together. Let me get this all welded up. Now, if you want to find a large chunk of steel that's already the right size that you don't have to weld up, that's great. I wasn't able to locate that at my local scrapyard, so I just decided to weld everything up out of smaller pieces, which is totally fine um, for what it's going to be used for. Also, this is a mild steel die meant to be used with mild steel or tooling underneath it. Now, these are just flat dies. I didn't know if I wanted to drill them out at a later date and add bolt-on dies or things like that, so I left them pretty much just as mild steel dies. The point is, is to get the mass behind the hammer, and then you can figure out your die system later. Whatever tickles your fancy. So now you can see we have this really tight fit around the wood here. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a really nice t tight foot around the end of this wood beam here, and that'll help prevent any potential splitting of any sort. Now, one thing I would suggest is when you buy your lumber for this project, that you make sure you pick the least knotty type of wood that you can get, um, or anything that has any sort of chinking or splitting or cracking or twists in it. Uh, it will just help you greatly in making this a really nice beam hammer. So there you go. So now you can see all the details there of how that all got welded up. That's it for this video. Join me in the next part of this series where we do the anvil block. God bless you all, and we'll catch you on the next one.